So you're the blonde traveler that everyone's been talking about. My apologies for not recognizing you earlier. Oh, a magic pocket? Seems you really thought of everything. I guess it's better to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Thanks. Oh, please, also thank the magician on my behalf when... What's this? Ah, so you also believe in the prophecy. <laughs> Keep it. I won't have any use for it. What? You mean you don't believe in the prophecy? No, no, I believe in the prophecy. But I also believe in another story. The story says that people once lived in the ocean. They were one with the ocean and couldn't live apart from it. But as time wore on, people desired to live on land and developed blood vessels, encapsulating the sea within their bodies. Thus could people set foot on land. So, if you ask me, when the water rises and takes us all, it'll be like we're going home. Oh, we hadn't heard that one before. But people can't live underwater, they'll die. You should probably still take it. <sighs> All right, I'll take it. I guess I just feel that being dissolved into the water doesn't necessarily mean death. Huh? <laughs> I don't want that thing. The way I see it, if the prophecy's true, it's still gonna be a long time before the water can cover everything. Life is all about living in the moment. What use is there in worrying about the future all the time? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. You should still take it. You never know when it'll come in handy. Oh, all right, fine. Thanks. It's just that if I start moving, that means I've already given up on the life I have now. I'd really rather not. Oh, you already handed out all of the magic pockets? Hm. That was fast. So, what did people have to say? I bet you heard some... Uh, interesting opinions. Yes, but that will change once disaster strikes. I know they'll change their minds, so it's only right to help them prepare. Is there anything else you need to do before we leave? Yes, one last thing. I have the magic pockets made by a workshop in the Court of Fontaine. Since we're out and about, I was thinking about bringing him some more materials. So, you want to collect materials? Just tell us what the materials look like and we'll help! Many hands make light work! Oh, that would be much appreciated. We'll need some Romaritime flowers. I remember seeing them near the waterfront on the east side of the harbor. Behold! What shall we do? Still. 
you made quick work of that. I can tell you're an experienced traveler. I've also finished collecting a few here. Maybe next time you'll feel like helping too, Lynette. No way. I'm in power saving mode today. Otherwise, I fear I may not have any energy left for the performance at the Opera House. <sighs> Fine. Though the performance is still a long way off. Now that we're finished here, we should get ready to head back to the Court of Fontaine. So, we're going to the Court of Fontaine before we head to the Opera House? Good. Paimon wants a tour of Fontaine's largest city and try... Wait, shh. Have you noticed that person over there? The young girl. Huh? What's wrong with her? Paimon didn't notice anything. <laughs> She's obviously a thief. Magicians and thieves practice similar methods. We divert attention and a distracted audience is one that won't discover what you're really doing. Watch her movements carefully. your voice down. We need to think of a way to catch her, but it seems she's very alert. Perhaps we should split up. You two can ride the lift over there and wait up top. I bet that'll be her escape route if she tries to run. All right, let's go. Stabilize! for a while now. Paima wonders if Lenny caught the thief. Yeah, let's go. Gather! Are you sure that's all she took? You should check to make sure you're not missing anything else. N no, that was all. Oh, I can't thank you enough. I didn't notice a thing earlier. Anyway, I should be going now. Thanks again. Oh, were you returning with the thief had stolen? That's right. Pity I wasn't able to catch her. She distracted me by dropping the thing she stole on the ground. By the time I looked back, she was already gone. I saw the general direction she went, but Linny twisted his ankle, and I needed to make sure he was okay. Oh, did you get hurt, Linny? I'll be all right. It's just a twisted ankle, that's all. In fact, it's feeling better already. If you want to play at being a hero, at least try not to get hurt doing it. Imagine what would happen if you managed to derail our performance as a result. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Sorry, Lynette. 
<sighs> I have to admit that the thief... But at least we were able to get the stolen items back, so it wasn't a complete failure. What a slippery little thief! Guess things turned out all right in the end, though. Lenny's initiative paid off! All right, let's put this little detour behind us. We should go to the Court of Fontaine now. This is an aqua bus. It allows people to travel between several key locations around Fontaine. It's pretty convenient, but the ride can become a little dull after a while. The scenery is always the same. That's why it's better to travel with friends. So you mean it's still boring even when I'm riding with you? Uh, no, that's not what I meant. It's just that, uh, well, you don't really talk that much. Besides, it doesn't really feel like a real trip when it's just the two of us. It's the same as being at home. <laughs> hmm. What? Guess that's what it's like to be an older brother. <laughs> it's about time for us to leave. Let's get on board. riding the Aquabus? In the story of my life, this is big news! What are you doing in Fontaine? I didn't hear anything about you paying us a visit. Yeah, it's quite the coincidence, but as travelers, we're always on the move. It's not surprising that nobody knew we were coming. Uh, though we still have no idea how the Hydro Archon knew about us. Oh, let Paimon introduce you to our new friends! Oh, no need for introductions, Paimon. I would recognize the great magician Linny and his assistant Lynette anywhere. I wouldn't be much of a reporter if I didn't know who they were. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Charlotte, a reporter for the Steambird. Nice to meet you. From the Steambird, huh? We've often relied on your paper to promote our performances. It's an honor to meet you. <sighs> now that everyone knows each other, Fontaine suddenly doesn't feel like such an unfamiliar place. So, what have you been up to lately, Charlotte? Any big news? Not too much. When there isn't any breaking news, I mainly cover the trials at the Opera House. You can still manage to keep readers' attention as long as you tell things from a clever enough angle, even if it's the same old topics. For example, reporting on how a scammer once deceived vulnerable girls into relationships, or how a financial criminal was once so poor that they ate a single piece of bread for five days. You're right. Seems you know me pretty well. What I'm really after is exclusive, sensational news pieces that could shake the country. These smaller stories are a waste of my talents. Oh, I just remembered. I've been following a case lately. Well, a series of cases, actually. You mean the serial disappearances of young women case? That's right! These stories are the talk of the town right now, and it's probably the most mysterious case we've ever seen. If I'm the first with a draft ready to publish when the case is finally cracked, and it's the headline story in the Steambird, oh! when that happens, I bet all the other reporters will shed tears of envy. I've already gathered all kinds of materials. I just can't wait for the truth to be revealed. So, what is the serial disappearances of young women case? You mean the culprit hasn't been found? That's right. The first missing girl case happened almost 20 years ago. And ever since, after a period of time, another girl disappears. What the cases have in common is that the girls are all of a similar age, and that they've all vanished without a trace. But the scariest part is that to this day, none of the girls have ever been found. Many suspects have been arrested over the years in connection with this case, but shortly after each arrest, another disappearance would always happen. 
Yes, it's possible. But either way, I believe that every case has some precise truth behind it, waiting to be exposed. Yes, I agree. And at the very least, the family of those missing girls deserves some sort of explanation. I just imagined for a second what I would do if Lynette were to suddenly disappear. I'd pay any price to get her back, and then find a way to track down the culprit. Please don't imagine that, Lenny. chatting with you. Life should be full of pleasant little surprises like this. Yeah, us as well. The ride went by too quickly. Ah, I have an interview to get to. I should get going before I'm late. Okay. Hyman hopes we can chat again soon, Charlotte. <laughs> Bye now. Oh, be sure to stop by and see me at the Steambird when you have time. What a tough job. Always running around and interviewing everyone. <sighs> Well, where should we go now? If you don't mind, how about we stop by my home first? Besides, I still have all the materials we collected. Sure, we wouldn't mind at all. This city is so huge, Paimon wouldn't know where to start anyway. <laughs> Still. This is our current abode. Ah, Fremenay, your home. Where did everyone else go? I have some new friends that I would like to introduce. Oh, they all just went out a moment ago. I see. Everyone is getting busier now that Father will be returning soon. I suppose that can't be helped. Allow me to introduce you to my little brother, Fremenay. He is a phenomenal diver. Uh, hello. Nice to meet you! Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler! Oh, you sound very proud to have a diver as a brother, Linny. <laughs> uh, Linny, could you come here for a moment? Hmm? What is it, Fremenay? Do you have something to tell me? Hmm, okay, I see. Is everything all right? Oh, <laughs> it's nothing. We were just discussing a little housework. Sorry for the interruption. 
Oh, uh, before I forget, the Traveler and I collected more materials to make magic pockets. Were you able to get any, Fremenet? Yes. I went diving and gathered lots of materials. I was about to give them to you. That's our Fremenet. Always quick with the underwater work. All right, I'll take these to the workshop. Looks like rain. Oh, you're right. But wasn't it clear and sunny just a moment ago? Hmm. Fontaine's weather sure is weird. <laughs> I'm afraid that's just how it is here. It often rains on days where there are trials being held in the Opera House, but don't worry, it'll clear up soon enough. <sighs> hmm? What's wrong, Fremine? There's a legend about the rain that I tend to believe. It's said that a dragon of water once resided in Fontaine. Though we don't know where the dragon went, every time it weeps, the skies will cloud up and pour out rain. When I was a child, my mother told me that if I wanted to go outside and play, I should yell toward the sky at the top of my lungs. Hydro Dragon! Hydro Dragon! Don't cry! If it's an elemental dragon, then having the power to make it rain wouldn't be very unusual. Hmm, let Paimon try something. Doesn't seem to be of any use. It is just a legend, after all. You know, you might be a more popular magician if you understood the concept of romanticism. Or could at least play along. <laughs> Sorry. It might be because we've never met the Hydro Dragon. Perhaps it can't be comforted by the words of strangers. Hmm. It rained for longer than I suspected. It's already getting late. Was there something you needed to do, Lenny? Yeah, some preparations for the show at the Opera House. I need to find a way to catch the last Aquabus of the day. On the day of the performance, just ride the Aquabus to the island of Araneus. I'll have Lynette meet you at the fountain in front of the Opera House. Oh, uh, are you leaving now? What is it, Fremenet? I'm in a hurry. Oh, I get it. You feel nervous delivering the materials for the magic pockets, is that it? Perhaps we could trouble the Traveler to help us take these materials to the Beaumont workshop and deliver them to the owner there? I'm afraid that Fremenet can be quite introverted, and the boss there tends to be pretty talkative. <laughs> Fremenet has always been a little afraid of her. No trouble at all! Don't worry, we're on the case! Sorry for the inconvenience. I'm quite useless when it comes to such tasks. I'll think of a way to make it up to you. Oh, no need, no need. This will be a walk in the park for us. New customers? Looking to buy, or do you need something made? Or perhaps you're just looking for a chat with me. Oh no, we're just here to deliver some materials. Here they are. They're for making... Uh... What were they called again? Ah, these must be for Magic Pockets. I could tell right away. I've already made several orders worth now. No, no need. They've already prepaid several batches worth. When they told me what they'd be using them for, I even offered them a discount. But they insisted on paying the full amount, saying that I had a business to run. <laughs> it seems both their hearts and their pockets are made of gold. Wow. So, is Lenny actually loaded? Mm, I can't say for sure, but who knows? Maybe there's good money to be made being a magician in Fontaine. Hey! Is this machine what you use to make stuff here? No 
looks really advanced. Why use your hands when a machine can do the work? It would be a waste not to use the latest technology. And wasting is a kind of crime. But where does a big machine like that get its power from? Ah, uh, well, it's a little complicated. I'm not sure I can put it in layman's terms for you, but basically, everything we usually use here in the city is powered by indemnidium. It's a type of energy that's produced from trials. Huh? How can trials produce energy? Well, I'm not completely sure of all the details myself, but basically... When a trial is in session, the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinale harvests people's belief in justice and converts it into energy to be used all around Fontaine. So that's what its other function is? Hmm. Paimon heard that the Oratrice was created by the Archon to make judgments. But... <sighs> Paimon still doesn't get it. How could something unreliable like people's beliefs be turned into a stable power source for these machines? Oh, yeah! So that means the Hydro Archon relies on the machine to take the energy created by belief and turn it into power for all of Fontaine, right? Even though I've never heard anyone really put it that way before, it sounds like it makes... Besides Indemnidium, we have another type of energy called Mumusia. It isn't produced by the power of the Archon, but it is unstable by nature. Even now, it still cannot be widely used by civilians. <sighs> I thought I'd find you hard at work, but here you are chatting the day away. Since you're already talking, I'm sure you wouldn't mind a few words with me. Y you again? Didn't I already promise you that I'd have the more I owe to Conferry of Cabriere by next month? Why are you hounding me now? Yeah, but how do we know that you won't go running off by the end of this month? I want 50% today. Wait, no, 70%. Huh? You... Seems business isn't so great for the workshop. We've already finished our job and delivered the materials. Maybe now's a good... Hey, hold on! Before you go around trying to collect payments, why don't you settle your own debts first? If Confrerie of Cabriere wants to poach clients from Northland Bank, that's fine. But I'm afraid you still owe the bank a hefty sum of more. So why don't we work things out between us first, before you get back to your little conversation here? Ah! Uh... You're from Northland Bank. But we said we'll pay everything we owe next month. Why are you hounding me now? Uh, Traveler, Paimon! I didn't think I'd run into you here in Fontaine. What are the chances? We're surprised to see you too! What are you doing here in Fontaine? You didn't want to stay in Snezhnaya? <laughs> Long story short, I've already been in Fontaine for some time now. And honestly, Things have been pretty boring, but it seems that fate brought our paths together today. Not only will I have some good friends here now, but ones who always seem to find trouble. Either way you look at it, it seems things are going to get a lot more interesting now. Pretty sure we'd want to avoid anything that you'd find interesting. Besides, our trip here has gone pretty well so far, right Traveler? <clears throat> uh, hey, you, Northland Bank boy. Aren't you forgetting something? Don't interrupt. It's not often I run into the Traveler like this. Why don't you wait for me over there for a while? Uh, you kidding? Aren't you the one looking for us? You really expect us to sit and twiddle our thumbs while you catch up with your friends? Listen to me, boy. If you want your Mora, fine. Why don't you come and take it? Hey, I just said not to interrupt. Oh, by the way, Traveler, the last time I took Tonya and Tuser ice fishing, Tuser said... Hey! That's way over the line! All right, boys! Let's see who has to pay up now! Uh, can you at least let me finish one sentence? Fine. Though the bank told me not to get rough with our clients, you're the ones who started it. This is an act of self-defense. <laughs> you two will have to be my witnesses, okay? I'm sure this won't take long. You can run, but you... Daka! 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 No time to attack! Daka! What's your deal, Brad? 
How are you so strong if you're just a staffer from Snezhnaya's Northland Bank? Wait, don't tell me you're... <laughs> oh, now you notice. It's a little late, don't you think? Just make sure you understand that you don't mess with Northland Bank. Got it? Uh, huh? Now's my chance! Huh. That was weird. I'm not sure. It's as if I suddenly lost control of my hydro powers when I needed them. Maybe there's something wrong with my vision? Strange. How could that happen? First time Paimon's ever heard of someone losing control of their vision. Never mind. It doesn't matter. If I want to stay sharp, I shouldn't be relying too much on my vision anyway. Besides, I always have my delusion in case I need it. So what are you doing in Fontaine, child? I don't see its work for Northland Bank. Well, I guess it's because I've been in a bad mood lately. Huh? What kind of reason is that? Wait, since when do you feel down about anything? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I still have a lot to learn about myself. But recently, there seems to be some sort of restless power stirring inside of me. And I don't know why, but every now and then I feel like I'm in a terrible mood. Hmm. Maybe you losing control of your vision just now is connected with that power you're feeling inside. Hmm. That is a possibility. I can't remember if I ever mentioned it before, but when I was 14, I fell into some unknown abyss. It was during that time I learned nearly all of my abilities. The one who took me under her wing and taught me was named Skirk. She was always quiet and very mysterious. Nobody knew where she came from or what she had been through, and she was always very strict when teaching me combat techniques. One time, I asked her why she was willing to take me on as an apprentice. From what I could make of her answer, it was because I had awakened it, and traces of it remained on me. She said that all my combat training would be useful in the future. But what is it? What did you awaken? She never explained that, but my guess is that it's related to a dream I saw when I had just fallen into that abyss. In my dream, I was in the deepest depths of the sea, and the boundless seabed was all around me. But in front of me appeared a whale that was so massive, I felt like I couldn't breathe. A whale? Oh, that sounds familiar! When we fought against you before, you summoned a huge whale that seemed to leap at us. Is that the one? <laughs> That's just an abstract form of a whale that I create using my elemental powers. It takes that shape because the scene I dreamt of the whale has always been stuck in my mind. I'll never forget it. So you used the whale as inspiration for one of your moves? Huh. Seems a little twisted to Paimon. So why don't you just go ask your master? Maybe she knows the answer. You make it sound so easy. Ever since the incident I experienced there, I've never stopped searching for Master Skirk and that unknown abyss. But it's been years now, and I've still found nothing. There isn't even a trace of the place where I remember falling into the abyss. Oh, it sounds like some kind of ghost story. Yeah, I'm out of leads at this point, but there's nothing more I can do. It seems that strange encounters in this world tend to be elusive like that. Oh! Seems the time really flies when I'm talking with you. I just remembered I have somewhere else I need to be, so I should get going. What? More work for the Northland Bank? And no, it's more of a personal appointment. Lately, I've been sparring with some of Fontaine's official champion duelists whenever I'm feeling bored. Official champion duelists? You mean it's their job to duel? Yep, in Fontaine, before a criminal goes to court. They're given one chance to defend their honor by requesting a duel with an official champion duelist. The champion duelists are all powerful fighters selected from among the nation's best. And the duel itself is a no-holds-barred fight with no specified stopping point. So engaging in such a duel is regarded as a symbol of defending your honor. If a criminal manages to win the duel, they'll be acquitted. But if they lose, 
they'll have no choice but to stand trial. And the worst case scenario is that you're simply killed in the duel. Though it's rumored that Fontaine has a death penalty, from what I can tell, no one has ever been officially sentenced to death. So really, the only people who opt to duel are those who have suffered a grave injustice in being accused, or those who greatly value their honor. Otherwise, why gamble with your life? So, do many people actually get out of their trials by winning the duel? Apparently, it's exceedingly rare for anyone to actually win. Fontaine probably enacted this system as a way to show that the nation respects the honor of its citizens. Besides, none of the champion duelists are to be trifled with, which is exactly why I was itching to face them as soon as I got to Fontaine. Apparently, the one I'm meeting today, Clorend, is the strongest of the champion duelists. I had been asking her for some time before she finally agreed to face me today. Well, that's child for ya! Hmm. Paimon feels like we heard that name somewhere before. Clorand. Huh. Oh, before I forget, I want you to have this. Huh? Your... vision? You're seriously just giving it away? I'm just worried that it could become uncontrollable again. I'd be pretty upset if it got in the way of my duel, so I think I'll be better off without it for now. Besides, I just need you to hold on to it for a short while. I'll come retrieve it when I have some time later. Hyman knows what you're up to. You just want an excuse to come talk to us again, don't you? <laughs> Whatever gave you that idea? I'll be in touch later. <laughs> that sneaky guy! He said he's been feeling down lately, but he seemed the same as ever to Paimon. <sighs> well, since we don't have much to do for now, we might as well walk around and see the city before Lenny's performance. Wow! Who could have seen that coming? The reporter who was barely around for most of the story was the murderer all along! Uh, sorry. Paima was just surprised, that's all. <sighs> Paima never saw that twist coming. The murder mystery novels here are amazing! The whodunits here in Fontaine are a lot different than the light novels you see from Yai Publishing House. Both have their merits, but Paima thinks this style of novels are more... well, novel. It's so exciting to reach the moment when the mystery is uncovered, especially in the one Paimon was just reading. You should buy a copy and read it, too. Oh, sorry about that. Paimon will be more careful next time. Uh, hey, shouldn't we be heading to the Opera House to see Linny's performance soon? It's almost time for the show to start, so we should get going. Linny said that the Opera House is on air in ES, so let's go ride the Aqua Bus! Mind the side effects. Stabilize!
Welcome to the Navia Line. I am Elfan. The boat will be departing imminently. Please do not stick your head, hands, or other body parts outside the boat. The Aquabus operator is not responsible for any accidents or injuries resulting from doing so. Also, please remember to buy the Steambird, though I don't read it myself. The destination of the current tour is Erinias. Points of interest worth visiting include the Fountain of Lucene and the Opera Epiquest. If you look to the left in the direction we are currently traveling, you will see the famous Fontaine Research Institute up in the sky. An experiment gone wrong turned new sightseeing opportunity. Human ingenuity truly is a wondrous thing. Approaching our final destination. Please be sure to bring all your personal belongings with you as you disembark. Even though I will take any forgotten items to the lost and found, the paperwork is rather annoying as melting hands are not suitable for grasping pens. Please be careful when disembarking. It has been my honor to be your tour guide this trip. Thank you. Please bless us with a bright and healthy child. We pray. I don't know why you always feel the need to ask so much. I'll be happy as long as our child is healthy and lives a peaceful life. <laughs> I guess if there are, kid, then there's no doubt they'll turn out smart. Maybe this is one of the customs in Fontaine. There sure are a lot of couples here. Vache. What's wrong? Vache. Vache. No, Paima didn't say anything. Are you hearing things? Welcome to the Fountain of Lucene. All the water flowing through Fontaine converges here. It's customary for newlyweds to come here and wish for children. Ah! <gasps> Lynette! You scared Paima! Why did you get here? Mm, when he asked me to wait here for you, remember? Ah, right. What do you mean? There are a lot of people here right now. Huh? Hey, you're not trying to scare Paimon, are you? Besides, it's the middle of the day. It's not the time for eerie things. Hmm, I see. I might be 
able to tell you something that could help explain the voice you heard. In fact, you might not be imagining things at all. I suspect that what you heard is a result of your hypersensitivity to the hydro element. Others in my family have had similar experiences. It's because of his sensitivity to the hydro element? But what would hearing a voice have to do with elemental power? When do you cry, Paimon? Wait, what? What does that have to do with anything? Just answer me. When do you cry? Uh, when Paimon's really sad? Oh, and when Paimon's super happy. Oh, and also when Paimon's really, really scared. Then you should understand that tears contain your most intense emotions. Like I just mentioned, the Fountain of Lucene is where all the flowing water in Fontaine converges. Even the tears that fall to the ground will eventually gather here. So maybe what you heard was the intense emotion coming from someone's tears. So, what did the voice say? Huh. If you were hearing their emotions, then Paimon wonders what happened to them. Rather than worrying about them, we should worry about my brother first. Don't let that calm look of his fool you. He tends to get pretty nervous just before a performance. So chatting with Linny might help him relax a little before he goes on stage. Oh, right. That makes sense. Let's go in and see Linny. Come on, don't keep me waiting. <laughs> <laughs> 